Dear friends, welcome to this course, Story of Photoelectric Effect. As the name indicates, it's not a course in its uh, regular sense. We will not have uh, much of examinations and gradations and uh, telling who has done uh, performed well and who has not performed well and all those things. We will not be doing that. It is just a story. And uh, we have chosen, I have chosen this uh, photoelectric effect, telling stories of uh, photoelectric effect because uh, uh, a very special timing. We are in 2021. It's very turmoil everywhere because of the health problems and uh, uh, virus problems and all those things. And uh, it seems that uh, life is very different from what it used to be and very difficult also. But at the same time, those who have uh, fought well with this virus and are still in a, in, a, in, a, in a good spirit, they have the opportunity to explore newer things because you have uh, you don't have those compulsions of regular fast life for your occupation and all those things. So this is the uh, one. And then this is a centenary year of Einstein getting Nobel Prize. This uh, Nobel Prize in Physics 1921 was given to Einstein and it's a common knowledge that uh, Einstein had done a lot of work on uh, relativity and uh, Brownian motion and photoelectric and photon theory of light basically. And uh, the Nobel Committee chose this last part, the contribution of Einstein in uh, explaining this photoelectric effect. So we are in that, uh, we have completed, we are completing 100 years of that Nobel Prize and uh, this is a good time to talk about what is this photoelectric effect that uh, brings Nobel Prize to Einstein and which uh, supersedes relativity which is so dramatic and uh, uh, so revolutionary which uh, changes the entire concept of space and time and uh, that work was also there in 1905 and this photon theory of light explaining photoelectric effect was also there in 1905 and the Nobel committee mentions about uh, relativity and all those things in the presentation of speech but then says that no no this photon theory is something very very special and this explaining photoelectric effect has uh, uh, big consequences and awards Nobel Prize to Einstein. Okay, this uh, whole idea of uh, celebrating this uh, centenary year of Einstein getting Nobel Prize is uh, from uh, Indian Association of Physics Teachers, uh, the branch of it, National Anveshika Network of India, for which I am the coordinator, national coordinator. We have uh, 26 labs running under this uh, umbrella in, in India and all those in charges of 26 Anveshikas are doing something or uh, other on photoelectric effect to tell these stories and to make aware of uh, how, how the experimentalists have done uh, wonderful experiments to bring out this uh, photoelectric effect and how Einstein has come out with uh, the explanations and all that. So that's the, that's the background of, uh, of this course. And uh, if I go into the story, the, we will go into the story, but before that, uh, let me tell you, there's a, yet another very special thing about photoelectric effect. It has contributed in three Nobel Prizes. Not only Einstein, but two more Nobel Prizes, uh, uh, this photoelectric effect has uh, contributed in that. And those are one to Philip uh, Lennard. Uh, and uh, in 1905, 1905 Nobel Prize in Physics is uh, to Lennard. I will just read uh, from presentation speech. Although, although the prize is basically for uh, doing experiments with uh, cathode rays which are nothing but the stream of uh, particles emitted by some material and uh, Lennard had done a wonderful thing uh, that I will tell in, in more detail 
but uh, Leonard's uh, presentation speech, Nobel presentation speech also mentions the work Leonard had done uh, on this uh, photoelectric effect. Einstein is there and the third one is Robert Millikan. We all, uh, many of us know Millikan's oil drop experiments. Many of us who, have, who are teachers who, are, uh, who have done MSc, uh, BSc, MSc, they might have done this experiment also where the determination of a charge on electron that is the, that is the goal of that experiment it is very famous Millikan is for that but uh, he gets Nobel Prize um, for uh, all the studies but very specifically a, a, a good contribution in, in that is from the experiments Millikan had designed, conceived and implemented and performed and results uh, obtained on photoelectric effect. Okay, so let me, let me read uh, some sentences from the presentation speech uh, of these three Nobel Prizes where photoelectric effect has some contribution. So here I am reading from uh, awards ceremony speech Nobel Prize uh, 1905. This is Nobel Prize 1905 and it is uh, given to Dr. Philip Leonard, professor at the University of Kiel for his important work on cathode rays. Now this is 1905 and uh, photoelectric effect experiments by Leonard's were uh, say from 1899 onwards. So it was not, uh, it was very recent that time. So focus on uh, the, this, uh, this sentence, these sentences here. In his more recent work, Leonard has been able to produce cathode rays with relatively slow speed rays which are formed through, cathode rays are just electrons. At that time, uh, cathode rays uh, was more popular name which are formed through the influence of ultraviolet light on bodies charged with negative electricity. This has also served to explain an important phenomena noted by other research workers. So this is uh, the Nobel Prize uh, presentation speech for uh, this Philip Leonard. And then let me tell you at the third Nobel Prize, which is which is this? This this is Nobel Prize uh, in Physics 1923, 23, 1923, and this was given to the Royal Academy of Sciences awarded this year's Nobel Prize of Physics to Dr. Robert Andrews Millikan for his work on elementary charge of electricity and on the photoelectric effect. Hmm? I will tell much in much more detail uh, what uh, Millikan had done. Uh, what kind of experiments he has performed on photoelectric effect, which has earned him this uh, Nobel Prize. And now, the first thing I should do is uh, what this photoelectric effect is all about. Uh, there may be some uh, friends participating in this uh, story session who have not gone through photoelectric effect formally because that is being taught in our nation in class 12 and that too at the end of class 12. So the students uh, who have passed class 12, they of course know what photoelectric effect is. But if there are students who have not uh, gone through that, uh, very simple, very simple, light when falls on certain substances and photoelectric effect name is uh, specially commonly uh, taken for uh, uh, metals. When light falls on metals in certain situations, this light is able to eject some electrons from, from that metal. And this phenomenon is known as photoelectric effect. Now, in 2021, there's so much of technology, there's so much of instruments and so much of knowledge about uh, the structure of the material and all that, that it seems very, very trivial thing. That okay, light falls on a metal and some electrons absorb energy from that light and they come out of, of metal. Very, very trivial thing. But uh, 
the way in which uh, scientists have reached this conclusion or uh, have seen these things in action that story is really very really, very really important okay so today i'll just uh, go through the very early developments in electricity and magnetism and i have put some names here that you can see early heroes of electricity magnetism so maybe what is what is available uh, what is documented what is known to us only we can talk of this there may be many many heroes who had uh, might have done wonderful things in this area but uh, somehow at least i do not know them and therefore i am not uh, listing so this is uh, no way a, a comprehensive or a, a, a big list or a complete list there may be many many scientists and in fact in fact i have chosen only few even from those who are known whose work are documented is it's so vast <laughs> that i cannot uh, go into each of them so i have chosen some landmark uh, contribution so gilbert this is uh, 1600 around 1600 he writes a book uh, in latin which is uh, the title the name the, the english translation would be on the magnet so before that the people only knew that uh, as it is it is known today people only knew that uh, there are uh, charges of uh, opposite kinds if you rub one uh, one material on other amber especially on some fur and then they get uh, properties of uh, attracting small small material particles like paper pieces and all those so that was known about the electricity and magnet there are some natural load stones which have this uh, property of attracting iron things so that was but then gilbert made made a lot of studies and then all his findings he write in this book on the magnet Benjamin Franklin is uh, a very well known name and his kite experiment is very very famous and this was conducted sometimes in uh, middle 18th century so around 1750s he had uh, done a lot of work and uh, the famous kite experiment for which Benjamin Franklin Franklin is known uh, very widely it's a general knowledge now not only for physics students and teachers that uh, the the thing which happens in in clouds that lightning and the things which are done in uh, in our laboratories on on this charged electricity they are same so they are also the same electricity is there in clouds which is there in the laboratory on which the experiments were going on very fiercely during those time so that uh, and, and it was very risky experiment also uh, because so much of storm and so much of uh, rain and in that uh, he performed the experiment with his son and so on so on, so on. then coulomb coulomb's law where <laughs> Coulomb's law. Everyone knows what is Coulomb's law. Q one, Q two, Y four, Y two, and not R square. So this Coulomb, uh, this time is also say middle eighteenth century, where he formulates that okay, if we have two charges separated by some distance, then uh, the force is proportional to Q one, Q two, Y R square, which is known as Coulomb's law. So that is this timeline. Then uh, this uh, Galvani. Uh, this is seventeen eighty six. He did some uh, frog muscles uh, switching using spark from some electrostatic machine, which were developed by that time by different uh, innovators, inventors, uh, scientists uh, who who were there to study electricity, what electricity is, and how to make uh, use useful applications of that. Then Oersted, very very respected name, Oersted. Uh, he connects this electricity to magnetism. Okay, the magnets were there, and studies of magnets were going on, and all those things. And uh, on the other side, the electricity, current electricity, those things were going on. And Oersted connects uh, through his experiments that the charge flow 
the electric charges and that uh, affects compass so just like a magnet affects compass the electric current also current carrying wire also uh, affects compass and uh, therefore electricity and magnetism are related phenomena so that comes uh, from both state then ampere we know ampere's law ampere's circuitial law and the unit of current is ampere in honor of uh, this person then ohms then faraday henry these are very big names who have uh, Uh, who has done a lot of experiments and based on those experiments they have formulated laws like coulomb's law right faraday's law and ampere's law and, and all those things that are there so these kinds of experiments separately on electricity separately on magnetism and then combined electricity and magnetism faraday's law of electromagnetic induction we all know so those kind of things uh, uh, we are done and then comes the superstar and that superstar is james clark max he writes uh, some some articles some papers and there he writes number of equations a number of differential equations okay all kinds of calculus differential calculus is there and the best thing is best thing is that from those equations from that mathematics he predicts that there should be electromagnetic waves yeah if you if you do proper experimentation electromagnetic waves should exist so that came from his equations and in the original paper there are some 14 or 16 um, such equations but then later people have arranged them in a nice way in vector form and now we know the entire electricity magnetism can be clubbed in four maxwell's equations <laughs> okay and so that is theory that he has developed a wonderful theory which combines electricity magnetism and predicts that there should be an electromagnetic wave and not only that he predicts that there should be an electromagnetic wave he calculates from the theory what should be the speed of that electromagnetic wave if you do something you make a circuit and then do something maybe from your setup waves will be generated what kind of wave electric field and magnetic field they will be changing with time and the space so that wave will, will propagate and what will be the velocity speed of that wave when it propagates in uh, in empty space or in air calculations from those equations give that it should be somewhere around 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second and uh, a totally separate set of physicists scientists who were working with uh, light a lot of research on light and uh, there is a wonderful story of uh, measuring the speed of light uh, how people have gone through various exercises and and finally gotten the speed of light as 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second so that was independently known and this uh, maxwell's equations uh, tell that okay the electromagnetic wave should be there and if they aren't there they should move with this velocity and immediately light was also clubbed with electricity and magnetism so with this background next lecture i will be coming to some experiments where this electromagnetic wave will be was created by hertz heinrich hertz and talking about that which will relate to photoelectric effect